This is New Game Chronicles, where I offer a chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdown of my immediate thoughts, reactions, and insights as I experience a brand new game. For our inaugural series, I'm playing through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Please note, there will be spoilers up through this point in the game. And with that, let's move. I'm waiting, Cloud. I'm here on the Midgar Expressway. The scene is indescribable. Countless buildings have been leveled, and part of the road has collapsed. The smoke rising from the rubble is reminiscent of a funeral pyre. Of course, this is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of the... It, uh, the fall of the Sector 7 plate, culminating in this unprecedented destruction, caused by a massive tornado which swept through Sectors 0, 1, and 2. After a briefing with Shinra investigators, Mayor Domino released a statement, declaring the tornado to be, quote, weather warfare perpetrated by the infamous insurgent group known as Avalanche. The administration also suspects the involvement of Wutai and has begun investigations into the matter. Of course, this is only the most recent in a series of crises. Multiple reactor bombings, followed by the fall of the... Uh, the fall of the Sector 7 plane. Boy, that tornado really did a number on the city. I thought another reactor blew up. Which must have been caused one, by the tornado! Man, when it rains, it pours. As you can see... Oh, over there! Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are already in progress. We still have one soldier right. That soldier, armed with a buster sword, highly dangerous. I repeat, the fugitive is an ex-soldier, armed with a buster sword. Huh? Back over here! Get him on board! Press for takeoff! The rescue team has pulled people from the rubble! Quick, get the camera off him! Oh, no, I can't wait. 
Excuse me. Could you look after my friend? Just for a bit. Too much Mako. But he'll be fine. <laughs> hey! Okay, we have got to talk about that opening. Not only does it pick up exactly where we left off in Remake, but it creates brand new mysteries right off the bat. Immediately, people exist and are cognizant in both timelines. This is huge. Red 13 is clearly awake in the Terrier timeline. So what does that mean? Well, who knows? But what a banger way to start this mystery. I still believe that this could be a stagnant reality, a static life stream, but it remains to be seen what exactly that means. Is it an afterlife? Not exactly. But perhaps it's a memory or an imprint of the planet, meaning that people within this reality can exist alongside people in the Beagle timeline. I wonder if this is going to end up being some kind of callback to the Final Fantasy VII chat room theories when people would discuss how to revive Aerith. After all, the infamous Aerith glitch sure looks a lot like this scene from Final Fantasy VII Intermission, right? And speaking of Zack, who had it in their cards that we would get to play as him first? Right? The first playable character in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is Zack Fair. So, that puts to rest all of the questions of is he going to be playable or not. Right off the bat, we get a playable Zack, which is absolutely incredible. What a banger way for us to start out Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Cannot... I, I was so hyped when that happened. Just absolutely incredible. <laughs> Stop. All of it. But I'm back now, Aerith. I'm back.
Now, as for the rest of chapter one, it's largely the same as it was in the demo. I love the Nibelheim incident and Cloud's flashback is just a delight through and through. I love all the added details, like the, the people doing yoga and their warm-ups and all that stuff, but mainly I love the lore drops that we get out of the world here, like this Mako Spring. How cool was this segment to kind of show us, you know, exactly what's going on in this world? Everything in the flashback plays out mostly like the original game, just with some added detail. Like this guy, Zongen. My gosh, I hope he has a bigger role in this game. He has become my new favorite NPC, and I've got to rethink who in this cast I'd take on a bachelor party weekend now. I think for right now, I'd probably choose Zack, Johnny, and Zongen. What a fun weekend that would be, right? What wasn't in the demo is what happens after the city of Nibelheim is set ablaze. They're really playing into Tifa's injury, which was detailed in Traces of Two Paths, including her surgery and recovery, and I love these details. I love this idea of, is Tifa dead? Was she killed uh, five years ago in Nibelheim? But the most interesting part of chapter one for me was what came after the flashback. First, this scene with Tifa and Aerith. Hey, Aerith? You awake? Barely. Why? Was wondering, what's Cloud been doing these past five years? Where's he been? And you're asking me this? Just had a feeling you'd know. Probably did at one point. All that stuff was taken from me, though. Or... Maybe erased? By whispers? Yeah. Maybe that's why. Why what? <sighs> this is gonna sound crazy, but as far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. So Aerith has apparently lost her foreknowledge, which means she's going to have to be so much more intentional in listening to the planet if she can even do that anymore. Somehow, defeating the Whispers has caused her powers as a Cetra to be stalled or weakened, which is such an interesting plot point if that's Sephiroth's plan, right? Disable Aerith so that she can't be the Cetra linked to the planet. I think that's really, really cool. Now, in my Final Fantasy VII lecture series, I discussed the importance of this kind of foreknowledge, as well as thin places to experience the world beyond, and especially Aerith's importance to the Sephirot Tree of Life in Kabbalah. But what I didn't talk about is how to actualize those Sephirot, offering a guide to fully experience and unleash the hidden light of those nodes, mainly because it wasn't relevant. Well, here, it's become really relevant because Aerith is going to have to reorient herself to hear the cries of the planet again. Now in Kabbalah, there's a process called devocate, a word that lends itself to modern practices of devotional focus. Devocate is described as the acquisition of knowledge of the future or the reception of heavenly impressions. Uh, the goal of this is to have close encounters with higher entities that would enable the human soul or the thought to act in an exceptional way. One rabbi says it this way, when the priest offers the sacrifice, he attaches his soul to the altar and his higher soul mounts above. They, that is the priests, attach their souls above and bless the people of Israel. This connection between devocate and sacrifice can be conceived as part of the integration of the psychological process into ritualistic practices, that is, sacrifice and priestly blessing. So we have two things at play with Aerith here, a priestly blessing based on a mystical union with the divine and a sacrifice. And boy, are we off to the races in chapter one for Aerith. No idea where this will end up, but man, oh man, stay tuned. Because we know that it all is going to end at the forgotten capital, where there's an altar and there's potentially a sacrifice.
So what does that mean? Maybe this is a process or an act of defecate that's going to align Aerith with this sort of priestly intercessor between the planet, the life stream, uh, white materia, holy, and the party. Really, really cool stuff. So can't wait to find that out. Next, we got to talk about the fight, right? Cloud, you up? Sorry, did I wake you? Nope. What's going on? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. There's just something I need to ask you. So, can we talk? Sure. Great, but not here. Follow me. Do you think Midgar's over there? Anyway... There's something I need to ask you, too. Shoot. That night, five years ago, at the reactor, I saw you lying there. Saw your wound and all the blood. I figured it was too late. Yeah? <sighs> Wait, what are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? <sighs> Can't believe I'm having this conversation with you. But here we are. Here, look. My scar, that proof enough? After you left, Zongon found me. He's the one who brought me to the clinic. He risked his life carrying me out of the reactor and down the river. It wasn't just him, though. There's the doctor who operated on me all night, and the nurses who looked after me for days on end. I'm here now because they were there for me then. And where were you again? In fact, where have you been this whole time? For five years! You know I can't tell you that. Of course you can't. Sorry, I just need some space. 
I love, I hate, and I love to hate this rooftop conversation between Cloud and Tifa it, because it's exactly what I predicted in my Kabbalah video. Sephiroth is sowing discord between them, knowing that Tifa is the one who can save Cloud because Sephiroth can't beat a fully actualized Cloud. Tifa is the catalyst to Cloud's actualization and Sephiroth is getting in between them. And I absolutely love it. I love the tension of it. I love all of it. But let me pause for a moment to just say this. Thank you, Tifa. Thank you, Tifa, for finally saying your concerns out loud. It has been since 1997, and it was so frustrating in the original game, knowing that you are there through all of this. You're watching Cloud, you're listening, and all we get is the dot, dot, dot. Thank you for finally, finally, finally sharing your concerns about what is going on with Cloud. It grounds Tifa as a real person with real concerns. And yet, she's still concerned about Cloud. But here, she is specifically calling out Cloud, questioning him, and Cloud takes that personally. And through Sephiroth's influence, well, he questions her right back. Now let me just say this, I absolutely love this tension and the drama that's going on between these two. It's very will they, won't they, and I just love it. And so, that's pretty much it for chapter one. As I release these, I want to remind you to please keep spoilers for future chapters to a minimum. I'm not there yet, and uh, maybe some of our viewers aren't there yet either. But I am fully aware that some of these ideas that I'm spouting off in these videos may be wrong. We're just taking this journey together, so I'll get there eventually. Uh, thank you for being patient. Anyway, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, walk tall, my friend.